Breaking news today. When will Russia's Wagner mercenaries be used again? Wagner private military company head Yevgeny Prigozhin died, adding his name to the long list of Russian oligarchs who have perished since the conflict in Ukraine broke out. Whether you tripped while smoking or fell out of a window, it doesn't pay to cross Russian President Vladimir Putin. Prigozhin passed away on August 23rd, less than two months after his march on Moscow on June 23rd. Small private military companies will align with the Russian military and specialize in gray zone warfare to serve Russian interests, and a power struggle for Wagner's resources is inevitable. A former restaurateur and businessman, Wagner became involved in the conflict in the Donbass shortly after forming the Wagner Group in 2014. Private military contractors are technically illegal in Russia, but Wagner received substantial funding from the Kremlin, and Prigozhin was a close Putin ally. Wagner was used by the Kremlin to further its foreign policy goals and expand Russia's sphere of influence in Ukraine, Syria, and Africa by taking advantage of the region's instability. Prigozhin was bitterly competitive with other top Russian military officials, such as General Valery Gerasimov and Defense Minister Sergei Shaigu, and he used Telegram to vent his frustrations with them. By using Telegram, Prigozhin was able to avoid government censorship. He said a Russian missile strike on a Wagner camp prompted him to declare mutiny. Although the revolt was short-lived, Prigozhin was able to advance to within 200 kilometers of Moscow after seizing the headquarters of the Southern Military District in Rostov. A peace agreement brokered by Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko resulted in the exile to Belarus of Prigozhin and his troops. Prigozhin was spotted on his way to and from Moscow in July, where he reportedly met with Putin. He posted a telegram video in August, ostensibly shot in an unnamed African country, in which he boasted about the liberties brought to the region by Wagner troops. On August 23, Prigozhin's private Embraer 135 jet crashed to the ground despite the plane's stellar safety record. Explosions were heard by onlookers, they said. One of Prigozhin's closest friends, Valery Chekolov, who had been with Wagner since the early 2000s, was also on board. Chekolov managed Prigozhin's logistics and ran his subsidiaries. Former Russian intelligence officer Dmitry Utkin, described as Prigozhin's right-hand man, was also killed. The United States intelligence community has concluded that the Wagner Group was the target of a planned assassination. Prigozhin's attempted rebellion revealed his extensive network of backers within the Russian armed forces and among the general populace. General Sergei Surovikin, who had led Russia's invasion forces, vanished after the failed uprising, and the Kremlin has since arrested those who were close to him. Surovikin was reportedly transferred to a new position and on vacation the day before the crash, according to Russian media. Despite suffering heavy casualties during and after the attempted rebellion, the Wagner Group still has thousands of members stationed at two bases in southern Belarus. Putin faces a serious threat from Prigozhin's loyalists, but the severity of his crackdown has reduced that threat significantly in the past two months. The Russian military desperately needs the more than 5,000 Wagner troops currently stationed in Belarus. To increase the size of the Russian armed forces, the Kremlin has mandated both mandatory and voluntary enlistment drives but the military is still having trouble finding qualified individuals to fill officer and non-commissioned officer positions. The majority of training facilities teachers have been sent to the Ukraine. Wagner's troops are not likely to accept with open arms a system they believe is responsible for the deaths of so many of their comrades and of Prigozhin himself. According to news accounts, Putin ordered all Wagner troops to swear allegiance to Russia at the same time he ordered the Wagner Cemetery in Nikolaevka to be demolished. To counter Wagner's influence, Prigozhin built a network of loyal supporters, which Putin is now actively dismantling. Gennady Timchenko, a Putin-connected oligarch and former KGB agent, founded the Reddit private military company in 2008 to protect his gas empire and is a major competitor for Wagner's resources. The Russian defense ministry fully supports them, and they have been focusing their efforts on Syria. As a key participant in the Ukrainian invasion, Reddit took heavy casualties. 
the company has hired former members of Wagner in an attempt to benefit from Prigozhin's failed uprising. The increasing sophistication of Russia's gray zone operations is exemplified by the fact that Reddit has become the Russian military's preferred private army. It demonstrates the interconnected nature of the oil and gas industry, war, and Russian diplomacy. The firm will employ murky strategies to expand Russia's sphere of influence. Who then will oversee the Wagner Group's vast holdings and international clout as CEO? In the past, Putin has used the wealth of oligarchs who were either executed or imprisoned in order to bolster the power of his other political allies. Wagner's potency and power, however, means that its controller could pose a threat to Putin, so he is likely to direct most of its resources elsewhere. Especially within Russia's intelligence community, whoever takes over must be loyal and adept at maintaining complex ties. Former members of the Soviet intelligence community have become influential members of post-Soviet society, where they have been staunch supporters of Putin. To keep the organization running and pay for its ongoing expenses, whoever assumes leadership will need substantial funding. Wagner has been successful in securing mining contracts in Africa, resulting in an estimated $250 million in revenue since the beginning of 2022. Since May of 2022, Putin has admitted to funding the group to the tune of $1 billion USD. The Wagner soldiers' contracts were attempted to be converted into Russian military contracts this year, but Prigozhin's wealth allowed him to pay them more than the average Russian military salary. Wagner employees who were offered these drastic pay cuts have declined them and instead gone into exile. Putin's efforts to regain control and enforce consequences for what he labels Prigozhin's serious mistakes have been made more politically vulnerable in the wake of Prigozhin's death. Putin won't let another private military leader command 50,000 troops like Prigozhin did during the Battle of Bakhmut because he knows what happened the last time that happened. Instead, Putin-aligned oligarchs will have control over a number of smaller businesses in Russia. These businesses will work in tandem with the Russian military to spread Russian control and influence across Africa.